Thank you so much for joining us on The Dwelling Show. I'm your host, Ola Dantes. I've got an incredible fellow Brit um, here on the show today. We're going to have some fun. Hey, Matt, how are you doing? Matthew Sullivan, thank you for joining us. Very well. Thank you for that introduction. I'm not sure if I can... My, my speciality is setting myself low standards and consistently failing to achieve them. So, you know, I... I you know. Well, I'm looking forward to that then. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, Matt, t- tell the listeners a little bit about who you are, kind of what you do and what you've been doing lately, actually. Uh, well, I moved, uh, yeah, as you probably detected, uh, originally from the UK, moved um, over here about eight years ago, seven and a half, eight years ago, landed in California in Orange County, moved to Utah about a year ago, um, really just for a change of scenery, actually, but it, you know, beautiful place here. Um, and my background um, is for the last sort of 25 plus years has been entrepreneurial. Um, I spent the uh, uh, few years in the late nineties working for, work, rather working with uh, Sir Richard Branson. Um, so I've spent some time, uh, you know, fabulous um, experiences there. Um, really, my background is telecoms, technology, finance. Um, and one of the things I'd always, always wanted to get involved with, but never really managed it when I was in the UK, was to get involved in real estate and real estate investing. You know, I'd had a, you know, a few houses and, you know, flipped, flipped a couple of properties. But um, over here, it was the one thing that I really wanted to learn all about. So um, when I moved over here, I set up a real estate crowdfunding company, which gave me the opportunity to really combine, you know, all of my experiences in platforms and, uh, you know, finance um, and uh, had a, you know, a, a baptism by fire of US securities regulations, had a great attorney that still we work very closely with. Um, so that, that's the sort of summary of it. But, you know, what we do now, we've been doing for the last four years, um, is we have a real estate program that helps homeowners unlock the equity in their home without having to take on more debt. So it's a, a way of using tried and tested funding methods that you see every day in the commercial world, but just applying those to residential real estate. Um, and so we, we help homeowners who can't borrow money, we help them tap into their home equity. Um, and we also create uh, a new type of investment um, for investors who want to get exposure to the potential equity upside in residential homes. The very oh, wow. long answer to a very simple question. Sorry about that. No, no, please don't. Um, that's really fascinating. So this is pretty niche, right? So for those who are kind of like dummies in this in this topic, um, can you kind of walk us, walk us it's, through? It's niche, but it's a very large niche. And I'm glad you pronounce it niche, actually, because, you know, <laughs> there is a tendency to pronounce it niche over here. So let's yeah, just no nail way. that one on my side right, you know. It is niche. Um, So this um, niche is about $23 trillion. Um, So it's a pretty big Big uh, niche. Um, So if you look at the overall equity in US residential homes, and the way you get that figure is you say, how much is all the residential um, uh, real estate worth? And then how much debt is attached to that? You subtract one from the other and you get $23 trillion. Now, not all of that is going to be addressable or, or investable because some of that is going to be people that have, you know, very large mortgages and very small amounts of equity. But there's about, um, we estimate between 8 and $12 trillion of equity that is available to programs such as ours. Um, and those are in homes where the homeowner owns 50% or more equity. So there is an enormous amount of equity um, that is owned by homeowners. Um, and the problem is, if you want to access that home equity, you have to borrow money. Um, and our home equity agreements are an alternative to that. In other words, it's a non-debt option. We enable you to access your equity uh, because we are investors and not lenders. So we can, I can, I can you know, dive into that in more detail if, if you want. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I've got so many questions for you, but I think um, for the sake of the guests, let's, let's dive into that. Um, so let's say I have a house, I don't know, $300,000 house somewhere in America, and I have 
won fifty thousand dollars in equity? Like, how does this yes. process work? Well, the, the important thing really is to understand, as I said, that we are investors, not lenders. So the way that we get paid is by taking a share of the potential future appreciation of your home. And, and the reason I'm saying this is because that will um, give you some context when I start talking about numbers. Um, so in order to access some of the equity in your home, you've got to have enough equity there to start with. So uh, you need to really have, um, uh, if we add your mortgage together with the amount of equity that we are going to invest, um, we, you still need to have about 25% equity left over. So the important thing is there is a qualification um, sort of set of questions as it were. This isn't available to people that don't have lots of equity. And, and the reason for that is when you sell your home or if you decide to buy us back, or buy the agreement back. When you sell your home, we get back our original investment together with a share of the amount that your house has gone up in value. So the way that we get paid, therefore, is not by charging you interest. So when we say there are no monthly payments ever, that's not because we're being generous. It's because the way the deal is structured, it, there are no there are no payments due. It is it's just not a loan. And you see this type of agreement every day in commercial real estate, where you have different layers of uh, funding in the so-called capital stack. You have junior debt, senior debt, there's mezzanine, which is a combination of the two. Then you have preferred equity or equity, or maybe a shared appreciation mortgage, which is a combination of debt plus an equity kicker. So if, if you're a commercial operator, there's a lot of different types of funding available. Um, and what we're really doing is taking one of those methods and making it available to homeowners. Um, so coming back to your numbers, your question, $300,000 home. Let's say um, for the sake of round numbers, we were to invest 30,000, which is 10% of the value of your home. We don't know, you know, you'll have enough equity. So we're really only focused on the value of your home today. So we write you a check for $30,000. When you sell your home, you commit to us that you will pay us back 16% of the value of your home when you sell it. And that can be um, any time in our, you know, in this particular uh, case, it can be any time in the next 10 years. There are other flavors of agreement where you can um, extend the agreement for up to 30 years and they're slightly different ways. But ultimately what we're doing is we are buying some of the future value of your home today at a discount. And that gives you a lump sum of cash today with no monthly payments. Uh, it's not debt. And that's a really important thing because it doesn't appear on your credit report as debt. You can use it to pay off credit cards or reduce your mortgage, or you can use it as a down payment on another property. So you can use it to diversify out of your you know, single concentrated asset, which is your home equity, and start diversifying into other assets. Because, you know, you what, what, again, another major problem is that most people have the bulk of their wealth concentrated in their home. Um, so, again, 30 answers to one question, sorry. No, this is so fascinating. I don't think folks knows, I don't think people know about this. So how long has this been around? And why don't we know about this stuff? It's... It's been around for about 10 years. Um, there are five companies um, in this space. I would estimate that about a billion dollars a year is invested now into home equity agreements of various different types. So it's relatively young. Only in, in the last four, I'd say three to four years, has there been um, any significant growth. Um, it's been around for, for some time. Biggest problem really is education. But to answer your question, we will know much more about this in three or four years time. So when financial products like reverse mortgages or home equity lines of credit, when they first emerged, you know, people um, took a little bit of time to understand them. But it was easier to understand those types of products because they're debt products. In other words, it's got an interest payment. It may be in the case of a HELOC, it may be um, delayed for a while and before it becomes um, you know, fully amortizing. 
but they're, they're debt products. The biggest challenge for us is education and marketing, but it does solve such a big problem and it's so attractive to homeowners, uh, particularly at the moment. We're seeing um, tremendous growth, tremendous um, interest in, in this particular type of financial instrument. Yeah, I, w- I, would, I would imagine so because you didn't have to pay anything monthly. Um, it doesn't hit your credit. Um, and then you guys just get a, you know, kind of a, a split at the end when I actually sell the house. So that, I mean, that makes sense. I do want to yes. ask though, if you have a, a real life case study of somebody that actually got the program and then sold their house, like, how does that, what does that look like? And where do you guys sit? Yeah, it's, again, it's the same, it's the, the same numbers. So that the numbers, um, we agree the numbers with the homeowner at the very beginning. So it's a contract, um, and we've done millions and millions of dollars of these. Um, so they're all, all very similar. So um, there are some differences in terms of, uh, you know, each property is underwritten differently. So the main difference is just the value of the property. Um, but the situation would be where um, you agree what is the um, percentage that we give you today of the value of your home. And we agree the value of your home by using an appraiser in most cases. So you've got an independent third party appraisal. So we agree that's the value of your home. We agree the percentage of the value of your home when you sell it. Um, In this case, if we were to invest 10% of the value of your home, you'd pay 16% when you sell it. And, um, you know, typically these agreements run for five to six years. Um, So they don't run for the full term because people move houses or they and find themselves able to remortgage or borrow money again at much lower rates because we've solved their problem. Um, in other words, their problem is their um, credit score has decayed because maybe they've run up credit card bills or haven't been able to keep their mortgage up to date. Because these are non-debt solutions, you can use them to get people out of foreclosure. You can use people to, you know, they can pay off, you know, liens, pay down credit cards. You're not using one debt to pay off another debt. You're using your equity, which is effectively part of your wealth. Um, so, you know, the real life scenarios, are, you know, they all play out, you know, very much the same. There's no, um, it's, it's just straightforward. There's no magic, there's no surprises. Um, the biggest challenge we have is people um, psychologically letting go of some of the potential value. Um, and that's a whole different subject because, you know, people see their homes as their nest egg. And what they really need to do is disassociate those two and say, look, your home is somewhere where you live, but the, the, the cash that's in there, just start, you know, do, start doing things with it. I'm sure you're a great you know, proponent of that as well. 100%, yeah. And, and, and that's actually something I wanted you to kind of um, shine some light on because most people think, hey, you know, this is my, you know, retirement or you know my kind of yeah retirement plan i i don't know if i want to mess around and you know unlock some of the equity but of course we as investors i mean we just want to keep our money and moving constantly um one thing i do want to ask you is so you know you'll be making in 10 years six percent right basically right because you're you're buying the contract you said at 10 percent, then you exit at 16 percent so on a 10 year horizon, you guys are, you know, for this deal that we, this case study, um, you're making 6%. So are you guys also looking for investors in some kind of fund or, I mean, because I mean, this exactly. is- Exactly. Seems- and, 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 and the numbers are actually different because it depends, the return to the investor depends on the duration of the agreement. Because um, if you assume that the house does not go up in value, and let's use round number. Let's, let's use your three hundred thousand dollar home. Let's say in five years, um, when the homeowner sells it, it does not go up in value at all. So let's say that we peak, that goes down a bit, and then it goes back up again. Now, my thirty thousand dollars, which was ten percent, has now turned into um, forty-eight percent. Mm-hmm. Sorry, forty-eight thousand. Forty-eight thousand. So in other words, my return, I've gone from 30 to 48. So that return is going to be something like um, 12 to 15 percent per annum. And, and, I, and I'm, I am approximating yeah. because your upside going from 10 percent to 16 percent 
um, you know, it's actually a 60, 60% uplift because you're, you're buying at 100, you're selling at 160. So that uplift does go down over a period of years. In other words, the, the annualized return goes down the longer the contract runs, but the contracts typically run, as I said, five, five to six years. So from an investor's perspective, you've got a relatively interesting investment because you've got the prospect of early to mid teens as a return, you know, subject to all the usual caveats. It's backed by a lien on real estate. So we do not own the property, which is a very good thing, but we do have our agreement protected by a lien. So it is an asset backed investment. And that asset backed investment has a return profile that is a direct proxy on the underlying value of the home. So you don't have to worry about complications such as um, you would find in the typical commercial deal. So this is not a triple net leasing deal. This is not a, um, a deal which um, depends on a number of moving parts as you will find in, in other you know, construction or um, you know, development deals. This is a home, you're tapping into the equity upside which is easier to understand. There's an enormous amount of research that's done every day on residential homes. And to answer your question directly, yes, we are looking for investors, but we've built a platform that enables each one of these home equity agreements to be sliced and diced into very small units. And people can go to our website, to our marketplace, and they will be able to invest in a small number of these fractions. So they'll be able to buy into a part of each one of these agreements. And that means they'll be able to build their own portfolio of potential equity upside in individual homes in areas that they decide are areas in which they want to invest. Fascinating. This is, um, <laughs> this is really, really interesting. Um, so if, you know, um, I'm somebody that has that $300,000 home and I want to get started. Can you can just kind of walk us through that step and what does that look like? Very straightforward. So we have to speak to people in different ways on the website. So there's different ways of uh, different sort of languages or not languages in terms of, you know, you know, there's a different approach, a different lens. So from a homeowner's perspective, it's a very straightforward process. Um, there's a button that says get started that takes you to a calculator and you put your address in there it then looks at what you know we estimate your home to be worth we then estimate what your current mortgage is based on publicly available information so there's no credit checks at this stage and it says okay based on the information we have we think we could possibly unlock let's say thirty thousand dollars or fifty thousand um, dollars and then the next stage is um it's it's a it's an online application form. So we have um, consultants and people that typically would like to talk to you and say, okay, thank you very much for your interest. Let me give you a call. Let's talk you through how this works because you're bound to have loads of questions because you know, it's a relatively new type of you know, financial instrument. So let's, you know, we'll use the old fashioned approach, which is talking to people. Um, and then the rest of the application is online. Behind the scenes, we'll look at your mortgage statements, your insurance statement, um, check out your identification, make sure that there aren't any issues on title. So our underwriting team does all of that back office work. Um, and then once we've done the appraisal, um, which normally we pay for, so there's no out of pocket expenses for you, we will make a, a, a formal offer saying, okay, this is what we think your house is worth based on the invest, based on the appraisal. And this is how much equity we can release because we've got the precise figures of your current mortgage. So we now know how much equity you've got. So this is how much we can offer. And um, this is what the repayment percentage would be if you decided to sell your home. Uh, and one final piece is if, we, if, if you decide to sell your home in, in a few months, for example, we won't exercise that full sharing ratio. So in other words, we will apply a cap. So there's an annual return on investment cap of 18%. That means that if your property skyrockets or you sell your property after a few months, then the maximum return we can make is about one and a half percent per month. So that means that um, you wouldn't get hit with that full, you know, 16% um, 
you know, value return. Makes sense. Wow. Fascinating. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. We're definitely, definitely dwelling into the quick rounds. These are going to be quick questions, quick answers. You ready, sir? I think so. Yes. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First question. What makes you, Matt, unique or uh, quantum Ari? What is that one thing that differentiates you from the next guy or the next girl? Well, really, we are doing something that is very different to anyone else. And um, the ability to unlock equity without taking on more debt. There are you know, other people that do that, thankfully. But the ability to make home equity accessible, investable and tradable, no one else is doing that. Um, and so we really do at the moment have a unique platform that solves a problem for homeowners and opens up an entirely new asset class for investors. Second question, what was the last book that you read and what was the one thing that you picked up from that book? Well, it's funny enough, actually. Um, I, I picked up a book by David Allen called Getting Stuff Done or something like that. Um, <laughs> no, and I'm sure if you Google David Allen and Getting Stuff Done, it's, you know, it'll pop up. But it's this really good book. And the thing that I, um, it, it tells you effectively how to manage your time and just, you know, stop wasting your, your brain power on useless things. And, and one of the big problems that I used to suffer from is I'd try and remember everything that I had to do, which meant that you know, normally on a Monday morning about 3 a.m. I'd wake up churning through, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to do that, don't forget to do this. Um, and what he says is, look, your brain is not designed to be a repository of useless facts. Your brain is designed to be creative. So find a way of dumping down all of this useless information into a book or some sort of app or um, some other way where you can reliably store what you've got to do and then just use your brain for creativity. Um, and that was the most sensible piece of advice I think I've ever read. Um, and, you know, the, the book itself is, is pretty good. But also as a, um, a speaker, there's a number of different, you know, videos that you can download where he talks to, uh, you know, the Google employees, it's really good stuff. It's not, you know, psycho babble. It's just really straightforward, sensible stuff that works. Wow, love it. I got to check that out. Um, final question. You're busy running a company. What do you do for fun? Oh, I just work all the time. I mean, you know. <laughs> no, I, do you know, I am, you know, anything to do with um, aviation fuel, gunpowder, gasoline, moving parts, oil, um, just that sort of stuff. So uh, I've got four young children. So they really, I mean, ranging from 10 to one and a half. So, wow. um, you know, this concept of having free time is, is a fallacy. Yes. So at the moment I'm doing, you know, Taekwondo, ice hockey, um, ballet, um, and you know, 55 other things. So, <laughs> but but I'm, I couldn't be happier. Matt, thank you so much. If there's someone listening and maybe they want to reach out directly to you or get connected with you in some way, what's the best way people can reach out, get to um, reach out to you directly? Sure. Thanks. Everything is on the website, which is quantumre, Q-U-A-N-T-M-R-E.com. So we've got contact details, phone numbers, email addresses, um, ebooks you can download, um, podcasts, um, news reports, tons of information there. Most importantly, there are human beings behind the website who would be delighted to um, speak to you and answer any questions you might have. What a legend. Thank you so much, Matt. <laughs> really appreciate it. Um, talk, talk soon. Thank you, thank you, thank the you. The pleasure is mine. Thanks for having me on.